Chapter 15, Super Scary, Noah Uchilis. There is a difference between being famous for your IQ or your naturally ranked science fair project and just being plain famous. I'd been both, and I had to say that the second kind is way better. Even Dr. Frederick Sanger, who won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry twice, wouldn't stop traffic on Hardcastle Avenue. Sir Isaac Newton wouldn't be the star of his cheerleading squad just by picking up pom-poms. And Stephen Hawking never had a sandwich named after him at the Olympia Deli like I did. The Super Kid. A hero role was sliced top sirloin in American cheese. I also had a Sunday named for me at an ice cream place and there was a Uchilis special at the laundry. Super starch for the super kid. Not even Albert Einstein got that. Donovan said it was all fake because I really didn't do the thing I was so famous for. But he was wrong. I saw this YouTube video once called America Celebrity Culture. According to the guy, at a certain point, you stop being famous for something. From then on, you're just famous just for being famous. If that was true, then it didn't matter if I was the one who saved the Mercury House or not. Being the super kid was what I was. Donovan kept warning me that it was all going to collapse like a house of cards. I pointed out that on a perfectly flat plane, in the total absence of wind and other disruptive forces, a house of cards could theoretically stand forever. Then he got mad, and that bothered me a little because he was holding me up and some of my fellow cheerleaders were waiting to take me to lunch. I have to go, I told him. If the girls and I don't make it to the cafeteria on time, we won't get our usual table. You're not listening, man, he argued. That Russ Trussman guy, he definitely smells a rat. And he's a professional newsman. Digging up dirt on people is all in a day's work for him. I glanced over my shoulder where Vanessa and the others were checking their phones and looking impatiently at the hall clock. To be honest, I felt a little torn. Donovan was my friend, but the girls were my friends too. And just because I hadn't known them as long didn't make it any less deserving of my attention. After all, when I first met Donovan, I was only Noah Uchilis. Now I was the super kid, and everybody wanted a piece of me. So, I said, you don't understand because you're not popular, but I really do have to go. And as I started for the cafeteria with my new friends, Donovan just stood there in the hall, staring at me with his mouth hanging open. I guess I gave him a lot to think about. Donovan was right about one thing. That reporter, Russ Trussman, wouldn't leave me alone. Even through my interview last week, the host of the Russ Trussman Hour kept coming to see me, both at home and at school, and calling me too. He wasn't very good at taking notes because he kept asking the same questions over and over again, especially about the chair. And to be honest, it was starting to cut into my personal life. Before, that wouldn't have been a problem because I had no personal life. But now I was really busy. I had cheerleading practice every day, plus extra training with Lieutenant Patterson, which was going really great. I'd improved 700% by the number of push-ups I could do, and I hardly fell at all during jumping jacks. In tire flips, I was up to two and a half lengths of the backyard before Lieutenant Patterson canceled them because his SUV needed new brakes. Our marches were now three miles long with three bricks on the back over my shoulder. Katie said I, if I continued to improve, we'd have to switch to a leather duffel because Tina's diaper bag wasn't strong enough for any more bricks. I also had interviews with other reporters who weren't so obsessed with one little folding chair. People wanted to honor me, like the governor who was coming to town soon. I was invited to parties, Megan for one. I needed cooler clothes. At least that was Vanessa and the other cheerleader said when they took me to the mall. I couldn't believe how many different bathing suits they made me try on. I had to admit there was a science in their approach. By logic, until all the possibilities had been tried on, it was impossible to determine with certainty which suit looked best. Vanessa had a very orderly mind. Russ Trussman even interviewed the cheerleaders, mostly about our routines and if they contained any moves that might have me prepared for jumping into a moving truck. The girls were also getting kind of sick of Mr. Trussman and his endless questions. I could be late. 
It was great to go on TV and all that, especially on a show as popular as the Russ Trustman Hour, but I was starting to wonder if it was all worth it. He asked me about the chair at least 10 times. He grilled my parents about what time I'd come home that morning, whether or not my clothes had been wet. Once he walked me out to his car and asked me to turn the wheel, but the car was in park, so the wheel was locked. Interesting, he mused. So how did you turn the wheel of the propane tank truck? I shifted it into neutral. He leaned forward eagerly. You never mentioned that before. Oops, sorry. The detail is self-evident, I added. How come you need to know all this? Are we doing a follow-up interview on your show? He smiled. Follow-up. That's a good word, Noah. Yes, I definitely think a follow-up is in order. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do another interview with Russ Trussman. To be honest, he was turning into a pain in the neck. We had celebrities and had to budget our time. Other drain of my time were the two Daniels who blackmailed me into creating an internet bot that would enable them to hack into the school computer and change your grades. That level of cyber incursion was difficult to fit between interviews, mall trips, and cheerleading practice. I was relieved to finally give them the program I created, Grade Worm. That should have been the end of it. But three days later, they lured me into a stairwell, their faces lined with worry. Dean Nussbaum reached out and pressed something into my hand. It was the memory stick I'd let, loaded the bot software onto. Oh, I don't need the flash drive back, I told him. I have 200 more in my closet. Take it, D. Sanderson hissed. We don't want it. Yes, you do. When I gave it to you, you said it was the greatest thing in the world. D. Nussbaum put an arm around my shoulders and steered me away from the parade of students going up and down the stairs. We tried it out last night at home. As soon as we got onto the school site, the warning started. Security alert, firewall, restricted data, do not enter. I told you about that, I reminded him. The system generates those responses, but Grade Worm is designed to punch right through them. All you have to do is keep clicking ignore. We did, Sanderson insisted, but the messages kept coming, and they got meaner and scarier. If the school finds out we did this, we're dead meat. Take it back, the other Daniel added. Erase it. Maybe burn it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just having it in your pocket is enough to get a guy expelled. Better yet, throw it into that lake of lava from Lord of the Rings. What about our deal, I persisted, and what I did what you asked. D. Sanderson shrugged. Fine, whatever. We weren't going to rat you out anyway. What kind of low lives do you think that we are? I almost replied, very low, but I wasn't sure if there were different degrees of lowness. So I said, all right, and they scurried off. I weighed the memory stick in my hand. I was going to do, what was I going to do with grade worm? Certainly not erase it. It was a unique piece of coding, elegant in its ability to evade security scams and burrow through firewalls. But the two Daniels were right about one thing. It would be disastrous to get caught with it. I could get kicked out of school. I'd have to go back to the gifted program. No, never. I had to upload this software to a location where no one would ever think to look for it. A flash drive was too obvious, and my home computer wasn't safe either. I was a celebrity now, and my fame could make me a target for hackers. Then it came to me, the perfect hiding place.